All right, well, I got my stuff here, the uh, the pulley, the bushing, and the fans. Uh, one thing I want to do, though, is uh, change the oil uh, on the unit, and uh, I'll, have to I'll have to actually uh, pull the cooler off, and I'll show you why. Well, if you see it's low on oil here, it should be up in the sight glass, I, I assume. You fill it from over here, which is kind of crazy because you can overfill it. Most rotaries aren't like that. You know, they typically have the fill point right where the sight glass is, so you can't overfill it. But in this case, you certainly could. But at any rate, uh, if you look at the way this cooler is right here, um, there's no drain on the bottom. You know, so this whole cooler really is full of oil. So I don't want to cross-contaminate the oil. This thing's been sitting for a while, so I assume that the oil filter is probably drained way down. And, and so is the uh, that air oil spin-on separator over here. I'm going to probably pop the top off of the uh, the inlet right there and uh, flush some oil down the air end um, and I'll show you I got the uh, I got the belts on here so here's the arrangement here uh, I didn't get a straight cut uh, pulley I got one with a bushing in it which makes it handy uh, as I'm going to change this because this is a 4.8 and this is a 5 and so there's a small difference in that and there's also small difference in variation of the uh, this is like an either or type of a situation it could fit a, I think a B belt and it, I think it was an A belt I wasn't quite sure but at any rate it was it would fit the belt but it changes the pulley uh, dimensions a little bit as it sits a little farther in the groove but for what I want to do to get a baseline on the pressure uh, versus amps go because I basically want to uh, run this at about 125 pounds max and it's rated for I think I don't know I have to check the bar pressure here hold on a second but at any rate uh, that's what my goal is to try to irk out a little bit more uh, uh, flow and less pressure um, what dictates the flow on these air ends is uh, the diameter of the rotor the length of the rotor and how fast you turn it to a certain extent you can only turn them so fast so I'm not so sure where I am with this one here exactly, uh, like I said before, uh, this is kind of a high speed unit really. I mean, most of the better rotary screw compressors, the main drive shaft is only turning at the motor RPM, and the motor RPM is only 1750. In this case here, you know, we're 3600 RPM, and I don't even know if, I'm assuming we're driving off the male rotor, so that makes it a little bit easier but if you drive off the female rotor that changes the ratio and it even goes faster uh, just the way of some manufacturers being able to use the same air in for two different horsepower ranges you know if you buy it at the small range it's pretty decent if you buy it at the high range with that same air end on it uh, it becomes kind of a high speed machine and you know anything that's turning at a higher rate of speed typically won't last as long bearings don't last as long traveling faster than you know our going at a, a higher rate of speed than than a lower rate of speed it just common sense tell you that so at any rate I got this together I'm gonna do a few other things to it let's check the pressure rating though again all right it says the working pressure is uh, well, maximum is 10 bar and if I look over here 10 bar is like right at about 140 pounds so I should have a little bit of leeway I don't want to run at that high pressure because then I'll lose the flow so uh, that's basically where I'm at right now. Here's something interesting. I'm going to use L1 and L2. 1 and 2 and I'm going to get rid of 3. I'm just looking in here. What's this for? It goes nowhere. Not hooked up to here. Interesting. And then I went ahead and uh, wired in the motor. Replaced the ground wire. It had this ginormous ground wire around here. Yeah, I had this huge, huge ground wire. I don't know why, but it did. You don't need all that. So I got that squared away. We got the, uh, the motor mounted and some conduit in here. Some old crappy, scrappy conduit. And I'll just uh, pull the cooler off next and we'll drain that. And put a little uh, oil change on it. All right, with that out of here, out of there, whatever you want to call it. Uh, really nice clean drain pan here. This should have oil in it. <laughs> and it doesn't. I don't know why it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't make much sense. I don't know how it could get in there and back out of there, but 
Wow, that kind of baffles me. Well, it just took a little while. I knew damn well there had to have been oil in there. It's a little thick viscosity, I guess. Strange, because normally this stuff's like about a 10 weight. I was going to say, man, that's kind of strange. But there she is. And, and like I was saying, I didn't say this to you before, but what kills me on some of these machines are like this one right here. Look at the amount of fluid that's in here. Although it was it was kind of deceiving there at first. And you can't ever get this out of here. There's no there's no drain on the bottom of it. So if you got contaminated oil and you're trying to do an oil change, this will kind of especially uh, you know trying to flush one of these things. You know what I mean? You you got all this residual oil you can't get rid of. Except for removing the cooler. So but at any rate, I just wanted to show you that. Well, if you see in the grand scheme of things, that could make a pretty big difference if this oil had a high acid number to it. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and drain the oil out of the sump tank here. Some chunks of shit coming out of here. Got tired of holding that damn bucket. Alright, this is what's known as a uh, open inlet, and it acts as a check valve. Um, as you can see, it just, it, uh, it's like a one-way valve. And uh, there's like a piston in here with an O-ring on it, and it just takes a pilot signal here to close it. And uh, that's to stop it from pumping, obviously. Um, most of these Atlas Copcos are... Um, typically got a closed inlet on them and it requires pressure to open the thing so this one's a little bit different I'm gonna pour some oil down here but it's not the oil is probably not gonna drop past this spring-loaded check valve so I probably have to put a little uh, screwdriver in here and then carefully pour some oil in here and then rotate it over in the direction it turns and that should all end up in the sump tank just to flush the air end out so I don't have to pull a flush on it just kind of cock it open like that and just use this Allen wrench as a, uh, a way to keep this open so I can get some oil in there. Well, in the, uh, in the risk of making a huge mess here, uh, this funnel here actually is a little bit tall. It's like a transmission funnel. But uh, this will hold that right down. I can just go ahead and pour the oil right down here. And like I said, it should end up right in the sump tank. Alright, so just pour the old oil in, or the new oil in, and then rotate her by hand. And you do this a couple of times. Not to overdo it like I just did. As to make a mess, which we just did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess that's the price you pay when you got a camera in your hand. But at any rate, so that should all work its way into the sump tank and on top of the motor and straight back down and around in here. Coming right out of here. So let me clean up that mess and do a few other things. All right, I got these $20 a piece fans mounted right here. So, uh, and they're going to be drawing the air across the heat exchanger, sucking it out like it was before. Cool thing before is uh, this was a pressurized uh, enclosure. You know, it was reliant on the uh, panels being on it for cooling. As all this was pressurized and it blew all the, all the cooling air right through the whole package and through the heat exchanger, cooler, whatever you want to call it. But now we have this change. So hopefully this will be enough cooling I think it really will be I mean there wasn't a lot of big draft coming out of this thing before if I recall but uh, I wish I had a temp gauge on it but I got a little infrared uh, uh, thermometer we can check a few temps on it so uh, we'll, what I'm going to do is uh, wire these up here just kind of run them through there and there's a spot down here where the uh, temperature switch was hooked into and uh, you can see here it's got a uh, it's got a little plug where there's nothing happening here so just knock that little guy out of there like so and then uh, gives me an extra spot 
that I can uh, run that wire into and so it'll be kind of clean in here. Alright, going to give her a little test around here. I came up with this arrangement here to uh, throttle it back uh, a little bit, so to speak. A uh, way of putting a little bit of a load on it and we can kind of use this as kind of like an orifice test because I do plan on changing the pulley as well. So uh, let's give her the old uh, test around here and see how she does here. We got the panel off of here. Taking a few, looks at a few different things, but so here we go. Uh, plenty of oil, holds about a gallon of oil. Let's give her a This unit runs start stop. So it won't even run continuously, which is kinda kinda crazy because you know rotary rotary screw compressors have a hundred percent duty cycle. And uh, so you should be able to run them just you know just wide open. That's the advantage over the piston compressor, but this thing runs like a piston compressor, start stop. So uh, at any rate, so I guess I'll have to probably do something about that because I don't really want to start stop rotary screw compressor but let's run it anyway and see how it does with these fans over here so let's give her another shot here get her to run at about 100 psi and uh, See what kind of temperature she runs at. Uh, that cooler is not going to work out considering I want to change the flow on this so uh, probably going to have to drop back here and uh, try something different well I did a little work off a of camera here uh, last night it got kind of dark out last night and um, basically I was looking at this old fan arrangement here again and I got to looking at it and I thought well you know I mean this thing kind of butts right up against the, the bolts which ain't the greatest but you know I think I can get by without the spacer so I actually drilled and tapped painstakingly drilled and tapped the uh, the center of this motor shaft for 3 8 and uh, let me tell you what man that shaft is, is some kind of a hard shaft shaft excuse me I have actually broke the damn key or the tap right off inside the thing it took a while to get that out of there that was a train wreck but at any rate uh, so it's it's tapped out for three eighths, and uh, I'm just going to uh, put the old fan on here, and I've actually tried this, and it, it works really well. And uh, I'll show you in a second. All right, so it's it's kind of on there in that fashion, and uh, I didn't even put a lock wash or nothing on here because you know the shaft's turning this way, this thing tightens that way, and it's going this way, and everything should be fine. And so I'll give her a whirl. Of course, I already have, and it works good, so here you go.
All right, well, I've removed the fan, and I've got this uh, ball valve here that I've been playing with here, uh, and I got a cock so that we only make uh, 80 PSI uh, maximum here. And uh, I'll show you. Here. should maintain about 80 psi and check our amperage here about 0.13 and the amperage on the motor if I remember right was like 15 amps so I got a little room to go because I want to put this larger pulley on and I want to just see what this does with the pressure versus the amperage so let me do that all right, with the new pulley on, the valve in the same position, and uh, we'll see what we uh, we gain for uh, for pressure here. We we're at 80 before. take it up a little bit faster because ultimately it's, I really want to run at about 105 pounds wide open and have it unload at about 110. So let's see what happens if I bring this up to like its normal rated pressure now which was like 145 pounds. Let's just see what goes from the amperage here. Let's get it shut off. Yes. <laughs> Well, was that 16, almost 16 amps there, yeah. So, hold on. Well, I'll tell you, this start-stop thing is a bunch of crap. But at any rate, so, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, next video, I will get into the intake. I already had it apart a little bit, and uh, it's just a check valve. It's not really a throttling intake, so... For all practical purposes, this machine is just a start-stop machine all day long. Uh, there's no real, nothing I can see from the factory that you could do to make this thing run continuously. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get inventive here. But uh, my plans for the throttling, throttling the inlet are definitely not gonna work with the inlet that's on there because it's just a check valve. So, at any rate, thanks for watching. Stay tuned.